right, let's uh, move into another feature that we're adding in version 9.5, and that is the Cloud Designer, also known as the Particle Designer. It's really a, a particle-based Cloud Designer, and it's an animated uh, option at that, so you'll see it in PD Howler. Primarily, now, I'm not sure yet about PD Artist, but uh, under the animated category of filters, you'll see the option there for Particle Modeler. Now, <coughs> the Particle Modeler will, when you launch it, ask if you would like to prepare this for an animation. And uh, I'm on the French version of Windows 8 here, Windows 8.1 actually. Um, so I will say yes, let's go and give it something like uh, 55 frames, short animation just for demonstration purpose. And we'll want to see that at about 30 frames per second. And let's go. Alright, so what the particle modeler does is give you this little window, a uh, big window actually, full screen, and uh, four views. There is sort of a perspective view that will appear on the right side. And on the left side, you do have sort of a top view, a left view, and a front view. And we have two tabs. The model view, or the model tab, is where we are initially. And at some point, we can switch over to the animate uh, animation tab. Uh, so let's let's start with this here. Initially, we'll need to populate this with some clouds. And you can create clouds in a couple of ways. You can add a sphere. Let's do that. And it's it gets 500 points by default. Once you have that, it's selected, it's highlighted in red, and you can move it around. You can do that in any of these views. You can also reshape it. So by default, it's a move action that you're doing. But you can scale it to change the size of it. And you can do that along one axis or the other, in the other views as well. And reshape it. Let's say we want to flatten it a little bit. Kind of like a little disc, keep it kind of a... Uh, spherical or circular shape here let's move it so let's go back to move something like this in the middle something like this in the bottom there you go all right if we wanted to see this really as a cloud at this time we could go right here get ready to render and we see the cloud now of course we can move it around here to see it from different angles and go back to where we were now this is no longer selected we would have to um, but what do we call it? Unfreeze it. So it's kind of in a frozen state at this time. You can unfreeze it and all the cloud particles or uh, objects or details are selectable again to do some more work on it. But what I'd really like to do now is add another sphere, another object. So I'm going to do, go right here again, add sphere. And this one I'll keep here, but I'll make it go a little bit kind of like a tube going up here. So I'll say, let's go scale that right there and scale it uh, up and kind of narrow. Same thing here and narrow and then uh, move it back again a little bit, move it up, something like this, All right? And of course, uh, this could probably have been done differently. Instead of creating a sphere like a blob that we shape and position here, we could have painted that. So instead of adding a sphere, and I'll do that one more time here, uh, instead of adding a sphere like this, you can also paint the sphere or paint just uh, a lot of different shapes. So let's move this here, something like that. So I'm going to create a paint a few more. I'm gonna use the airbrush for that and basically paint something around here, another here, you know, do a couple of loose uh, impressions of uh, extra blobs. So now we have a rather scary ominous cloud and uh, we can get ready to render that. Gets a little bit of lighting. You see some lighting, uh, you can adjust the brightness. Uh, you can adjust a couple of parameters that will make it look very different here. So there's, there's uh, ambient, ambient light, there is uh, also there's really two lights actually and you can change the cloud orientation or you can change the light orientation. So you can, if you select light one and then drag around here that rotates the light. If you select light two it rotates the other light. And this one has a little bit more of a bluish tint and I think the other one has kind of a reddish tint, yellow reddish, orange, let's settle for that. 
Um, there is also control again of the, the cloud uh, ambient light lighting. And so you can make it very, very saturated white here or give it a bit more detail and structure there. Self shadow uh, can be very time consuming, but uh, adds a nice uh, amount of visual realism. And it's basically sort of a uh, global illumination with the environment. Uh, no, actually self shadow. Well, similar. I don't know. It might be exactly the same. Uh, not sure what that is. Oh, here's the color of the light. So what you can do is you say, okay, I want a really reddish light. And then you have the other light, uh, light two. Uh, or maybe they're all the same. I don't know. I'm just discovering this with you here as I'm going for the first time. Um, so now we have, let's give it a little bit more saturation there. Or less. There you go. So we have this cloud and we'd like to animate it. All right. So um, what we can do, first of all, we can save it. We'll be able to open that in this version, not quite yet, but at some point uh, we'll be able to, to reopen that. Um, we can unfreeze this entire shape as well. So uh, even though it was initially created from multiple shapes, uh, oh wait, I'm still painting here. Let's go freeze and unfreeze that. Let's go say move. So you can, you can still do some scale and reshaping and other things there, right? So um, let's see what else, rotate. Rotate it, there you go. Okay, so that gives you the uh, basic idea of how to create a cloud. And once you've created that cloud, you will want to probably rotate it. I mean, not necessarily, this might be just the, uh, excuse me, animated. This might be just the only cloud you want, right? You may want to render that, go to animate and simply render a still image. Uh, but if you, if you have actually created an animation, um, you now have down here in the animate section, a timeline. And so you can go and drag along or scrub through that timeline and say where this cloud is going to be based on the timeline. So let's say you wanted that to be, maybe you want to fly into it. Maybe you want to, to be from far away, come closer. Just a short animation like this, right? So use the left button. If you use the right button, you can move in other axes, other directions. Left button lets you rotate, uh, I mean, move uh, sideways and into the scene. Uh, there are a couple of other options here. So, you know, play with those. And there are also some secondary motions and displacement fields. We'll explore those in individual short demos uh, soon in another video. Uh, but what we want to do simply, let's say we want to simply have an animation that brings this cloud uh, from far away to really close up and we fly into it. And maybe we'll rotate a little bit into it as well. So we'll set one keyframe while we are here at the very first keyframe. Let's set one keyframe, record it, and then we'll go to the last one and move the cloud closer, simply dragging it. And we also want to rotate it. So make sure you use the rotate tool here. You see the tooltips move, rotate, and there's sort of a scale or zoom. Uh, that actually is interesting because you can, you can uh, with the scale or zoom, you can have a couple of really funky effects with that. See how it kind of uh, makes the cloud particles go swoosh and disappear and then come back together. So you could do all sorts of really interesting, uh, very different animation effects. But here I want to kind of get the impression that I'm flying into the cloud, uh, perhaps also a little bit around it. So I want to have a little bit of a rotation to that. Let's keyframe that. So as we go through that now, we can scrub it and you see the preview. Now, if you're on a slow system and it takes too long to render that, what you could do is say, don't render the preview here. Uh, and so you can just, that usually goes a little bit faster, right? So here you have a, a point of clouds or a cloud of points rather, and uh, you can disable the grid. You can show the clouds in the pre-render. And um, we'll just render this way. Next uh, video, we'll do a couple of more experiments with secondary motion, with displacement field, and with just alive. Uh, let's go disable these all for now. We can still add a few more options here and animate those. Uh, let's go render and see what that gives us. So that may take a little while, but it's not really that slow. Now it's, it's far away, so it's kind of hiding behind this uh, pop-up window. And in a few seconds, it'll be done. 
and we'll have our very first animation of flying into this seemingly volumetric cloud, which really, in a way, it is. So you have particles that are in different positions in 3D depth, and uh, as a result of that, uh, it, they define sort of a volume containing that cloud. And there we go. Almost done. There you go. So now at this point I can close that. And we have the animation right here. Now you notice the grid is not here. So the grid was displayed in the cloud generation system during the rendering. Uh, but it's only there as a visual aid, so you can uh, perhaps uh, find a reference plane against which you're flying or into which you're moving. Uh, in the end, we really are interested in having just clouds, uh, but they are rendered against a white background in this case. You could change that, you could have other image uh, starting from, like the black background, and then have the clouds come from that. So in the next videos, we'll learn a few more tricks and options that you can exploit to make some other types of clouds and some really funky effects with that too as they animate. Alright, thanks for watching.